Yep, I must be out of my Falkland mind. It's time for reaction. Hey everybody, welcome in. It is June 14th. My name is Old School Nerd. Check us out on OldSchoolNerd.com. It's got all of our social media posts, the Patreon link for those who want to help support the channel, and the merchandise store. Now, today is June 14th, as I said before. Now, for me, in South Louisiana, here in the United States, it's just another day. But if you live on the tiny island cluster of the Falklands, in, in the southern Atlantic Ocean, just east of Patagonia, <laughs> Argentina, um, it's a very important day to you. It's Liberation Day. Now, in 1982, there was a conflict that erupted. Now, by the way, at that time, I was eight. <laughs> I was eight years old. Don't remember anything about it um, other than it was going on. I saw some stuff on the, on the TV. I remembered a couple of words that kind of stuck with me, and I've done some research about it, and I could tell you a little bit about it. But as far as the political leanings, between the country of Argentina and their claim on the islands and the British Commonwealth and their claim on the islands. I'm an American, so I really don't have a say in this one, but I can tell you that the people of the Falklands are apparently wonderful people because one of them said, hey, hi. Yep, her name is Kristen. Hey, old school nerd, my name is Kristen from the Falkland Islands. Uh, on your next Sabaton reaction, can you react to back in control I've got the governor to listen to it. It would mean everything to me and my family and the residents of Falkland, of the Falkland Islands, if you react to it. All right. So uh, just so everyone understands this, uh, Kristen is from the Falkland Islands. I talked to her. She said that the Falkland Islands have about 4,000 people on the islands right now. Um, it, <laughs> their actual liberation day is tomorrow, uh, June 14th. It is also because it commemorates the day that Argentina and the UK signed the ceasefire in the conflict in 1982. Um, now, I, I do want to say uh, right, right off um, to the governor of the British-controlled uh, islands of the Falklands, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nigel Phillips, um, happy Liberation Day, sir. Um, and I uh, hope all the people of the Falklands are having a wonderful year. Hopefully you guys are staying warm because at this time of year in that far south of the southern hemisphere, it gets quite chilly down there. Um, if you want to know what, uh, what, um, what the Falklands actually looks like, uh, you can graze sheep there. Um, it is very cold. Uh, not a lot of trees per se in the outer lands. Very grassy and very rocky. Similar to Iceland, but I don't think their ground is on fire. Yeah, Icelandic people, you know what I'm talking about. Your ground is on fire. It's kind of an issue. So let's get back to this, okay? The political ramifications between Argentina and the UK are not what we're here for, okay? The song is about the conflict, but I'm not taking sides because that's not my job. My job is to react to music. And Sabaton wrote a song called Back in Control Now. I do know a few things about the uh, Falklands War, and I may stop the video and share a few things that I remember and things that I recall. However, if you want to know the real story behind the political decisions and the leaders of those two countries and, and the choices they made that brought about the conflict, um, at the end of this video, uh, in fact, I'll just do it right now, right there, go to that link there, or you can wait to the end of the video and I'll have it posted there for the Sabaton History Channel. Because we all know the British have their side of the story, the Argentinians have their side of the story. Hey, let's ask the Swedes. They're fine. They, they'll just tell you what happened. They're, they're not really, they're, they're, they're kind of neutral in this. They're cool with it. Okay, so let's check this out now. This is Sabaton back in control. <laughs> Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. This I know. Okay. 
You see this? You see this right here? This word? Okay. <laughs> Exoset. Okay. Now, what I do know about the Falklands War more than really anything else are two terms. The first one is Exoset. Um, before the Falklands War, there was never really an issue where ships of the line were under any risk of being damaged or sunk by anything other than submarines and air attack from airplanes launching missiles or dropping bombs on them. In the late 70s, early 80s, there became a company, and I believe it's a French missile, um, called the Exocet. It was the first standoff, as in over the horizon, outside of radar range missile that could be carried by pretty much any, if, if the airplane had a basic radar system and a basic fire control system, it could carry it. Okay, and the problem with this missile was, is it was designed to be a standoff missile where the, all the, all the pilot had to know was the general direction and distance of the ship. Fire the missile in that general direction, the missile did all the other, all the work. The missile would drop to just below the height of the waves and turn on its seeker radar head. It would find the ship and destroy the ship. And they could fire it from so far off that there was no plane for the Royal Air Force to shoot down before they got in range because the missile was standoff. And because the missile was flying so fast and so low to the water, they couldn't shoot it down. So, the, so when you have the Royal Navy, which is a naval power for hundreds of years, and then you have the Argentinian Navy, which is not, that Exocet missile kind of even the playing field because now the Argentinians had a missile that made any, any British ship vulnerable. Um, so um, the first order of business for the British uh, forces was to get rid of the Argentinian Air Force because as long as they had that missile, they were very vulnerable, which proved true in the conflict because I believe the, the British Navy British Royal Navy lost four ships of the line, two corvettes and two frigates. No, two destroyers and two frigates, I believe. Sent to the islands to secure what is ours, marching ashore in the cover of night. I done till dawn and yeah, look. In the so. The airplane's not even anywhere near anything, and all he's got to do is fly in the general direction, drop this sucker, and it lights off, and it drops down to the wave height, and it's, it's just gone. I like to shake them awake with the thunder guns. Worst picture of Margaret Thatcher ever. I, I get it, but that's not good at all. Now the Royal the Royal Navy could shoot down any Argentinian airplane that entered its airspace. That that's not disputed. The problem was is that they were launching the Exocet outside of the horizon. It's really hard to shoot down an airplane if you can't even see it on radar because it's too far away. But yet it can just shoot a missile and let the missile close the distance. Um, because of the kind of leveling of the playing field that this missile had. There were serious losses on both sides. Um, the, the British, like I said, they lost four ships of the line. Uh, hundreds of uh, servicemen passed away. Uh, sailors uh, died in the conflict. As well as uh, the General Bellissimo, which was the cruiser Argentinian's flagship, which sailed out of Patagonia. To this day, the people of Patagonia still suffer and reel 
um, from the loss of that ship because it had so many of the young men of that area of Argentina serving on that ship. So even to this day, um, if you've... <laughs> A bad example, but it's the only one you most of you probably know. Have you ever seen the Top Gear Patagonia special? When Richard Clarkson, Jeremy, uh, Richard Hammond and Jeremy May, um, not Jeremy May, Jesus Christ, James May. James May, Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson go to Patagonia to drive cars around Patagonia because it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet for scenery. One of the most gorgeous um, mountain ranges and just nature in the world but when the locals of Patagonia realized that three British people were there just being goofballs they barely got out alive okay so the wound is still fresh now here's the thing the political uh, decision making and the political uh, choices that were made not my business I'm American that's between the UK and the Argentinian government. We're not talking about that. But we will mention that to all of those in the Argentinian Air Force and Navy who serve their country with honor, doesn't matter whether you're on the right or the wrong, doesn't matter what your leaders say, if you served and gave the ultimate sacrifice, we honor you. To those in the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force and the Royal Marines who, on the invasion task force, lost their lives, gave the last full measure of devotion to queen and country, we honor your sacrifice. To those uh, citizens of the Falkland Islands, some of who were killed in friendly fire and just got caught in the crossfire between these two nations, um, we uh, sorrow for your loss and happy Liberation Day. Um, again, I don't have a political opinion on this. Um, history weighs that out. Again, at the end of this video, there's going to be a link. If you want to know more about the, the intric intricate details of why what happened, who was impacted, and the ramifications. Sabaton has a great history channel that explains it to you. Right now, it's about Kristen. <laughs> it's about the people of uh, Falklands enjoying their day. So let's, let's continue on. Now, interesting picture. There's audio of when um, Margaret Thatcher went before the House of Commons and declared that they were deploying an invasion fleet with, um, with a carrier, multiple cruisers, and the House of Commons, the Labour Party, just lost it. However, she was the Prime Minister, the Tories were in control, and uh, she was determined to... Uh, the Labour Party... It's it, okay. Even in the United States, we struggle where we send troops all over places in the world that we've never heard of. And we send troops places that we've never been to. And, and they, we put them in, in, at risk. It's hard to accept that when you're, when, you're, when you're here and you're not there. And Margaret Thatcher was determined. Um, there were a lot of people that thought there was no reason to risk the lives of British troops for islands that nobody knew about and they were no longer of strategic value because they don't use sailing ships anymore. However, Margaret Thatcher said, they're, they're British subjects. They are loyal to the crown. The crown will be loyal to them. And that caused a huge uproar. Luckily for Margaret Thatcher, since the British did prevail in it, she had kind of a victory. However, the loss of four ships of the line did kind of mar her, her continued... Uh, her tenure as prime minister. Um, but if not for the Iron Lady, the people of the Falkland Islands would not be British people. They wouldn't be uh, citizens of the Commonwealth. Uh, it would be Argentinians. So to the people of Falklands, it's very important. Uh, so when I, see, when I see her, this British, Britain's fighting lady, yeah, she was a hard ass. <laughs> she was awesome. Uh, she, her, controversial, yes. Are there things that a lot of people look back on and don't like about her? Yeah, of course. She's human. But as, as a prominent woman, breaking glass ceilings, being the first British prime minister that was a woman, she was perfect for that. Why? Because she was a female Winston Churchill. 
if you don't know the reference, look it up. You have to be a certain kind of megalomaniac sociopath to have that much um, mental fortitude for that job. And she had it. She was a staunch iron. That's why they call her the Iron Lady. Because you, if once she makes up her mind, she'll die for it. It was pretty impressive. Um, he did mention in the song real quick about the Harriers flying. That was the other thing that I really remember when I was eight years old. I remember seeing the, um, the news reports on the news, the, the nightly news. My dad would be watching the news and he'd be clicking through and stuff. And they would talk about, you know, the British invade the Falkland Islands and repel the, you know, Argentinian forces and blah, 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 blah. And then I remember them mentioning the Harrier jump jet or the Harrier 2 the Sea Harrier. And um, when I went to school the next day, that's all kids talked about for like six months was an airplane that could take off and land anywhere that they just thought that was the coolest thing. So yeah, two big military, um, um, two large military innovations that occurred was the Harrier jump jet in the Falkland Islands. It was the first time we saw that and a standoff missile. In fact, the Exocet paved the way now to where it changed the, the military focus of naval warfare, not just for Britain and Argentina, but for all navies. Once the Exocet was proven as a standoff missile, um, the, um, the Aegis missile system was developed because of the lessons learned from the Falkland Wars. If not for the Falkland War, um, uh, the Ticonderoga class cruiser and the, and the Aegis missile uh, defense system would never have been built because um, until it was proven that most missile defense systems for ships were ineffective against a standoff cruise missile like that. They had no need for it. Now, it's standard hardware. So that's something, uh, it's, it's a shame that, that through such tragedy, we gained such innovation. Um, uh, what, what people don't realize is the same technology that <laughs> develops the Aegis system is actually some of the same stuff that we use for Wi-Fi interconnectivity. <laughs> so, does it matter? No. Not daily, but when you think about it, it gets a little weird. Okay, back to the video. Come on. The Iron Maiden, get the islands back. And you will not be accepted. Call for artillery strike. Launch attack. We are back in control. Force them to surrender. Take what is ours. There's the Harrier. Back in control. Force them to surrender. Take what is ours. Restore law and order. Back in control. Push them further out to sea. Bombers in our hands. All right, so <laughs> that was sabotage. And that's still the worst picture of Margaret Thatcher I've ever seen. Okay, again, another one. Okay, so let's, <laughs> so, okay. Um, to the people of the Falkland Islands, happy Liberation Day. To all those who uh, perished, gave the ultimate sacrifice for queen and country and for the country uh, of which you pledge allegiance to, which would be Argentina and the UK. Thank you for your sacrifice. Um, you don't make the decisions, you just do what you're ordered to do, and that is honorable. And we salute you. To the people of the Falkland Islands, and Kristen, happy Liberation Day, guys! Yeah, no, I'm... No, I, I've, I gotta go. No, I... Yeah, that's it. No, 
There's more, but I'm not. No, it, go go there. Go right there. No, they can, it's it's sabotage. They got you. Trust me. Oh.